Okay, as we continue about money, we've been talking about loans. We're running out of time. Uh, this is part three of loans of money, lessons of money. We're talking about giving loans out. And what we just said is a person's choice whether to offer a loan to someone. If a person has a need but has proven himself to be untrustworthy and or lazy, then that person will probably not be granted a loan. Now, if somebody comes up to you and says, listen, I went to the bank or I went to this loan place. I applied for a loan, but they wouldn't give it to me. And they come to you. I ask why. I would maybe even go down to the bank or that place and say, why didn't you give this guy a loan? Before you give a loan out. Now, it may be true that, you know, the bank, you know, just doesn't give out loans to people who really don't need them. But 1 Corinthians 4.2. And you may be faced with this one day. And I'm not talking about someone who has a million dollars. You may, you know, you may pay your bills. You may have very little in the checkbook. And someone says, listen, I, I need $500 or I need something. For whatever reason, they may call upon you. It may not just be a millionaire. And God may be calling upon you to be a blessing. Or Satan may be calling upon you to be a curse. A blessing that this person really is called of God to come to you and a curse if Satan brought this guy to you just to steal your money. And I said, not all people are honest. When you when you deal with people who want money, you don't give them cash. You'll be a fool to give money to an organization that they don't tell you where the money went, but you know, it could go for Coke machines and air conditioning offices and you know, big salaries. And you got to be careful in your church, too, where your money goes. Because you got to put it down and find out where the church and the treasurer, where that money is actually going. And there are churches out there that put money into events and activities that are anything but godly. And put their money into organizations as anything but Christ-like. And support missionaries that do anything but the work of God. You got to be careful when it comes to money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money is that it, it, it's that thing, it's that power that can really destroy a life, if not a family, if not a church. First Corinthians four two says, "Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful." And what do you think he's talking about? Yeah, he could be talking about the, the walk of the Lord. He could be talking about Bible reading. But what about your finances? What about your bills? And I said, we're, we're coming to a place in America today that America's being crushed. There are no more jobs. There are no more money. The government itself is over a trillion dollars in debt. How do you pay a trillion dollars? The government itself is in debt to China. And then people are in debt to the banks. Mortgages and loans. And still going out and getting more. And they don't even know if they're going to have a job tomorrow. They don't even realize the story of Babylon fell in one night. And you think, you think, and you think that America is going to be here for 400 billion years. That in glory is going to be the new heavens, the new earth, new Jerusalem, and God bless America. And it's that thinking is why everyone's in trouble. When given a loan to another Christian, oh, so when you give a loan Christian, you better make sure that guy is saved. You better make sure he's in the Word. You better make sure he's living Christ-like. Another Christian. I wouldn't give my money alone in a church of persons in church who's not saved. Why hasn't he got saved? As he's rebelling against God, he's going to be rebelling against paying you. And if he's a Christian, he's not living right for God. He's not going to be living right by you to pay you back. If you're to give a Christian a loan, guess what? 
It is to be interest free. Uh, you mean I can't make money? Deuteronomy 15, 1 through 3. Deuteronomy 15, 1 through 3. You are to give a fellow Christian an interest free loan. You are entitled, if, if he borrows $500, you are entitled to $500 back. You know, if you say $450, you're giving an offering to God, $50. If you say $400, you're giving $100 back to God. Let's say your guy borrows $500. And he comes up to you, and he, whatever he's, I mean, he, he got financially strapped. Beyond his control. He comes up to you, he hands you a pay, he says, Brother, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I owe you $100 more. I, I'm going to try. I mean, listen, he skips his game. He gives you $5 one week and, you know, $6 and that. And, and, I mean, he's trying. And you say, You know what, brother? The rest of the debt I clear. Not only are you giving that to the, that Christian, you giving it to God. Now, what if you would put interest on that loan? You're robbing from God. You're asking five hundred dollars and whatever more back. The church becomes a commerce. Have you ever noticed what the words the banking industry industry uses today? They use our words, redemption. Check out the words in the Bible and what the what the Bible and what the banks use and loans. They match. Deuteronomy 15, 1 through 3. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth unto his neighbor shall release him. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother, because it is called the Lord's release. Of a foreigner thou may exact it again. That would be an unsaved person to a church. But that that which is thine with thy brother, thy hand shall release. Illustration. One man found that the one man found that the two house loans he had taken out in his life could have been paid off in seven years each, at the monthly payment rate the bank had set. If the loans would have been interest free, there is an interest. There is a very interesting in light of what the Bible teaches. In those verses above, because in God's plan, that is exactly what He required: interest-free loans to relatives or fellow believers, and a maximum length of time for a loan was seven years. That goes back to again what we're saying. Listen, you can get a loan for ten thousand dollars and pay twenty thousand more just in interest and money that you lost. And the banks and all them, are, listen. They charge you 5% or not, if not more, and they give you 0.01% interest on your savings. Doesn't that tell you something? Think how many Christians could have had their homes paid off in seven years if other Christians whom God has blessed would lend the interest-free loans to them. Think about how many dreams would have been settled if they'd gone to another Christian and Christian come to them and say, listen, I'll give you a seven-year loan for that house, no interest. Now, can you imagine both you and, the, and both parties in prayer, in fellowship with God, how well that would have worked out? Can you imagine how much God would bless the guy who lent the money to him and then how much God would bless them with a lender? Now he has a house that he can get to God. He don't have to take out extra hours to skip out on church because he's got to work another job just for the interest. If this principle is followed, churches would not have as many financial problems as they do. The members would have more money to invest in the Lord's work. Instead of spending so much time to pay all the interest of their loan. Now, what about a church that gets a loan that has interests? 
the standard principle. You are using God's money to pay off interest more than the principal. You are using God's money to fill the bank vaults. You are using God's money for an unsaved person to fatten his wallet. Well, why can't you wait till you have all the money? Well, well, you can't pray like we've been praying for the Christians to pray? Well, 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 yeah, well, well, well. You go well, 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 and the Christian goes but, 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 but. I'm sorry I had said that. No, I'm not. One reason may be that many Christians are not trustworthy and responsible today. Remember, lend with discretion. That's a proven thing. Many Christians today are not trustworthy. What do you, what, you want me to lie? You want me to follow John 8, 44? There are Christians out there will, will, will pull the rug out from beneath you and charge you for the band-aid to put the, on the boo-boo of -boo your head that they caused. Another reason may be greed. When you have a great deal of money, it can earn a good deal of interest each month. And a loan out your money interest-free means you lose interest, you lose money, you lose a profit. Rather than a prophet from the Lord that we read about. It is sad that so many people are only thinking about laying up treasures upon earth. I'm going to say one more comment. Probably more, but. Whether you did or didn't do, or whether how you did or how you didn't do, you will stand before the judgment seat of Christ one day. I don't know. I don't know the story. But you will judge, be judged by Jesus Christ, right or wrong. Matthew 6, 19 to 21 says, We are not to lay up our treasures upon earth, but we are to lay up treasures in heaven. <clears throat> you know, I'm not saying do or don't do. But I'm saying God's not God's not deceived. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also receive. If you want to be stingy in your money, there may be a time when you need money and, and people are going to be stingy to you. God will be stingy to you. I'll tell you the blessing that God has with us right now. I don't know how my checkbook is plus. It shouldn't be. But yet God blesses us. As we try to be a blessing to others. And when you support missionaries, as such as we do, not only do you get, in fact, throw you know, money, but you get the return of souls saved and grown in the Lord. How can you really tell if people are laying up treasure in heaven or upon earth? Matthew 6.21 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What is your heart set upon? When it comes to the money, and that's what we're talking about here. Is, is it mine? Mine! Don't you dare touch it! Don't you ask me! It's mine. I earned it. I'm entitled to it. And one day when I retire, if I retire, the Lord, if the Lord tarries, I'm going to go off and sail around the world. I'm going to do a bunch of things if I don't end up in a wheelchair and all this stuff. It's mine. You type of Christian, well, this is the extra. I've done everything else with, with what I want to do. And this is the extra. That's what Jesus dealt with. With the, uh, the in the treasury with the Pharisees, they just toss in their excess. What you know, they went all out there. Whatever they had left, they threw it in there. But that widow woman came with her two mites and gave all that she had. You know who Jesus spoke up for? Now I'm not telling you to give all your income. Don't say I said that. You got to use discretion.
You now know the answer to where your treasure really is. Is it serving the Lord or is it to get other material possessions? Let me ask you. That ten dollars, ten dollars, five dollars. If it became to buy a Christian a meal who can't get a meal, or to buy worms and skip out of church and go sink worms all day long, where would it go? That hundred dollars will it go into a missionary plate? To support a missionary, but we'll go to a restaurant after the pastor finally finishes up with the message. Wish he hurry up because my stomach's brown and I really want to go out to eat. Oh, darn, if I get the $100, I'm going to have to go home and have spaghetti holes. I don't want to miss my favorite restaurant. Money is a very serious thing, and we got we got a lot more lessons to do with money. And we're going to get mean and we're going to get nasty and I'm going to kick and churches are going to hate me. Pastors are going to hate me. Christians are going to hate me. And some are going to say, Amen, glory to God, I'm glad you're preaching. it." And some are going to get down on their knees and confess their sins and plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and hope to get right. And some are going to, you know, curse me out. If you need some, if you know somebody who needs a preacher like me, a teacher like me, I'm open and available. I'm looking for somewhere. You give me a call, phone, uh, email, or anything like that. If you can handle what I preach, the truth, and remain in the truth in the King James Bible, listen, I'd be willing to come and be your pastor. Because I love the Lord and want to do right. 